Hi everyone, welcome to the studio today. Uh, we have a fun program planned, so uh, welcome. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Portland. I have spent the last week kind of roaming around and just really enjoying the spring show that we have here. Uh, yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before that, I went to this beautiful garden uh, nearby called Bishop's Close, and it's kind of a uh, somewhat private garden. It's open to the public, but it's associated with a monastery, I think. And oh my gosh, it was so amazing. The layers of foliage and the spring blossoms, and it was just astounding. So I got plenty of new photos, like I need any new ones, but it was really uh, just such a beautiful, beautiful day. And I hit the, the time of day uh, just perfectly. So that's really, really fun. So I'll be painting some of those for you guys in uh, acrylic and pastel and also watercolor later in the summer, I think. So it, that was really, really cool. And what else is, go oh, even in my garden, it's just kind of astounding every morning to get up and look around and just see what's happened overnight. It's just kind of crazy and just love it. I've been spending a lot of time in the yard and planted a few new things and uh, just really exciting to see what kind of fractals and patterns come popping out from the flowers. It's, it's amazing. So really enjoying it. Um, so I wanted to start out today's uh, live stream with a little bit of a tribute uh, because Richard Schmid passed away. And uh, I feel so fortunate to have been able to study his, his books and have his books. And um, the, his books are such an amazing resource I think some of the um, best painting uh, study that's that's out there, and uh, so I feel really fortunate to have been able to spend time reading his books. And his books have such a, a clarity and also kind of a sense of humor and humility, which I so appreciate. Uh, and I was also very very fortunate a number of years ago. I forget exactly when, and I also, excuse me for forgetting the exact place, but it was in Wichita, Kansas, and I taught a workshop there, and I was also a juror for a beautiful pastel show that was held at a uh, art center. I, I believe it's the Wichita Art Center, though I'm not positive, and I tried to look it up, and I tried to find my paperwork on it, but I just couldn't, um, but I taught there it was fairly lengthy. I think it was a four-day workshop, but I was there a while because I also was the juror of the show. And they happened to have a, a fairly extensive collection of Richard Schmid's work that was hanging in the art center. So at, on my lunch hour and my breaks, I got to go in and stick my nose right up to many of his works and he had still lifes and figurative and landscapes, a whole array of his work there, and just so astounding. And I feel now even more gratitude for having that opportunity. And I, in particular, I remember one little piece. It was only it was a small piece. There were some larger ones, but this particular one I just adored. And just a small little piece of a farmhouse at dusk and the, all the tangle of foliage, which you guys might know that I just love, and a little light on in the interior. And that kind of scene can be kind of, you know, trite and a little schmaltzy, kind of, maybe a little. Um, but this one wasn't, and uh, he, he just did such a masterful job of everything he painted. And so um, I just, super uh, appreciate um, him. Uh, and I wanted to read a little quote. Uh, a, lot, a lot of stuff on the internet's been going out, a lot of tributes to him. And um, I also got an email from Plain Air Magazine um, the other day. And there was a quote from him that I need to read 
again, I need to read today. And it, here it is. I'll just go ahead. It kind of makes me cry a little bit, so bear with me. Somewhere within all of us is a wordless center, a part of us that hopes to be immortal in some way, a part that has remained unchanged since we were children, the source of our strength and compassion. This faint confluence of the tangible and the spiritual is where art comes from. It has no limits, and once you tap into it, you will realize what truly rich choices you have. May each painting you do from that sacred place include an expression of gratitude whew, <laughs> for the extraordinary privilege of being an artist. Um, and I feel that extraordinary privilege because I, I, I do think that art comes from a deep wordless part of us um, that is always already the case. It doesn't change, so it doesn't age, and it's the source, the source for strength and goodness and love. And if we tap into that, as he said, even faintly, and sometimes I feel like I'm doing that faintly, because of its great power and essence, we don't have limits and we can do great things. And I do believe that's where anything good comes from, mostly for me, art. And that's why painting is such a joyful and peaceful thing for me. Probably it is the most joyful and peaceful thing that I do and that I've ever done. And so I think that every painting feels as though it is that expression that he spoke of, of gratitude for the extraordinary privilege of being an artist and he put it so very very eloquently and I appreciate having read that <laughs> so yeah so that's that's a good way to start today I think um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, what we have going on and then I'm going to talk about materials a little bit and I'm going to paint for you a little today. Um, so with that, all of that, um, I have a really huge announcement today. We're launching my new workshop, Adventures in Acrylic, and not to belabor a segue, <laughs> but I have to say that this workshop is all about that extraordinary joy of being an artist and painting our hearts out. It's about painting anything and everything that you can think of or that you might have ever pondered painting or that you thought maybe you couldn't. You didn't have the skills or you didn't know what to paint it in or that you couldn't or you shouldn't or something like that um, because I feel like um, I have really explored through this workshop and through this year actually and through the, um, the encouragement from my students and the what people have asked me to, to kind of delve into, that I've really um, painted so many different subjects. And so this workshop is all about that. So we're gonna paint um, everything. We're gonna paint avocados here. We're gonna show you a little bit. We're gonna paint leaves. We're gonna paint mushrooms. We're gonna paint landscapes. And we're even gonna paint a little kitten, which is, really fun. <laughs> and so not what's not to love about that? <laughs> I think it's pretty uh, cool just to, you know, everything that you can think of. And one of the things that I think of as a painter that I get a little nervous about is, you know, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting up there in age. Am I, am I ever going to get to everything that I want to paint? And how am I going to do that? And so that's, that's, that's what I was, uh, that was the motivation behind this workshop. And acrylics are amazing. They're so fun. They, they can do just about anything you can think of. They can emulate watercolor. They can emulate oils. They have their own, you know, characteristics that we can tap into. They're great to have fun and be creative with. Um, they're superb for mixed media. So um, this workshop, we, we go into all kinds of stuff so that you can really just 
take it and go on your own flight, your own adventure afterwards. So you can continue the adventure. So that's what it's what it's all about. So the workshop is now launched. You can go to the website paintinglessonswithmarla.com and see it. Um, and it's on sale for about three weeks. It's $110 right now. So it's a really, really good price because it's 14 hours, over 14 hours of video, a 70 page uh, study guide, which is, um, which I'm really proud of. And uh, so that's $39 off right now. And also if you are a member, remember that if you're a member of pastel, um, monthly pastel painting lessons online, you get $15 extra off um, right now. So, um, so that's it. So I'll be talking about the workshop as we're painting today. Uh, it's, um, I think it's one of the most fun and exciting things that I've done. Um, so check it out. Um, it's, it's up there, it's ready to go. And, and of course there's a Facebook group associated with it um, that you can join. It's, Facebook's made it a teeny bit harder to um, get people into groups, but um, we have a process for you. And it, you know, if you just um, are patient, it's not, it's, not, it's not too hard. Okay, and with that, um, oh, I did wanna show um, Richard Schmid's book before we go. Um, yeah, so this is amazing, you guys. If you, um, if you can, get it, get it, and st stick with it and read it, because the writing is uh, some of the best writing about painting that, um, that, I've, that I've encountered. So check it out. And I, I look at this book all the time. So great stuff. Look, look at all the stuff, you know, the still life, the figure, the landscape, just amazing. Okay. And it's very encouraging book as well. It's very positive and encouraging for beginning students. So that's really neat. Really, really neat. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna paint a peacock today. <laughs> I already started it. I'm gonna get as far as I can on it. Um, I'm gonna just show you how, I'm, how I set up my palette, how, I, how much paint I use, how I mix it up. I'm gonna throw a lot of paint on here today. I'm not gonna get super far probably, but um, I, what I did do, maybe I can show, hold this up, I don't know. Well, I started this one a few weeks ago, and this was on an old, this is on an old canvas that is not the right proportion for this guy, right? But I just wanted to practice. So uh, this is, um, there's another painting underneath this, and I, there's, there's a lot, there's a, maybe I should just put it up here, and we should put it, yeah, that, that's a better way. There's a lot I like about this, okay? I, I, I kind of like the background. The background is implying flowers and something going on here and kind of grasses down here. I like the fact that this, this texture is the, the peacock sort of lost and found into the background. I like that too. I like the thickness of the paint. So I'm gonna to try today to get some of this in this new new drawing. And this one, I like the composition. I like the composition much, much better on this. And I, th I think this is kind of a neat start. I wanted to give him a little headroom. I think I could have made him a teeny bit bigger, but I, I wanted to give him a little headroom. Um, so we could, we'll be able to play with his feathers, which of course are the main show here. Uh, there's so many cool shots of peacocks um, online, and it's really hard to decide. I, I kind of feel like I need to do like 10, 10, different, 10 different ones, but I hope I get to. Okay, so let's talk about the, the paint a little bit. Uh, and the palette here. So there's so many different ways that you can go about doing, setting up a palette for acrylic. And 
of course they dry fast so that you need to have a method or a, or a, some kind of process for keeping it a little wet keeping the paint moist when you're on this on this palette um, it will dry pretty quickly if it's especially if it's hot out but I have a little spray bottle and because I'm working rather large, I am going to mix up quite a lot of paint. And so that in itself kind of helps keep the paint, you know, moist, just having a, little, a pile of it, piles of it. So that's one thing. If I'm working rather small, I'm going to set up a do-it-yourself kind of stay wet palette. And in the workshop, I talk about how to do that and... So there's several different ways you can go about setting up your, your paint and your palette, depending on the subject, depending on the scale and what you're, what you're going to do. So I cover a couple different things in the workshop. So now this paint in this bead, this is a bead box that I got from Michaels. And um, I learned this method from an artist friend, um, Jed Dorsey who also paints in acrylic. Um, and I saw him do this when I was at um, Fall Color Week uh, a couple of years ago. So now this is just a piece of, of paper towel you can see that's been wet. And this, this whole operation I've stored in my refrigerator. And this paint's been sitting there for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it's just perfectly fine. And it's just, um, yep, yeah, going to be great. This is this piece of glass. Sometimes it's you want a piece of glass that um, is going to be kind of thick. So, if, you know, you don't want to, if, if you drop something on it, it's not going to crack or anything. So this is a piece of glass. And the, also it's got nice soft edges. Guess what this is? This is a piece of glass from Ikea that is meant for a, uh, coffee table so it's cheap to get that because if you go to a, even a gl good glass store and order a large a piece of glass like this is it's kind of expensive but go, just going to Ikea and get in it it's cheap so then I've taken a piece uh, I've taken a spray can of um, just middle gray like primer gray and sprayed the back of it a couple with a couple of good coats and then you have a middle gray, gr absolutely great palette. Uh, so that's in its inexpensive. And this, and I have an even bigger one out in my other um, painting area. Okay, so that's it. And so I'm going to mix up some paint. Um, and oh, the other thing about this palette, this little bead box. So these um, popsicle sticks are great if you, if I really need to pull out a lot of paint of a particular color and I don't want it contaminated, especially the white. All right, where to start on this guy? Whew. Um, I'm gonna start with blue <laughs> because that just seems like the right thing to do. Um, all right, so this is phthalo blue. See, a lot of paint. I think one of the kind of, um, kind of uh, mistakes that beginners make is not mixing up enough paint. And it's easy to do that because you think, oh, first of all, you're not sure. And next of all, it's expensive. Um, and you know, you probably heard the saying, you got to paint like a mil millionaire. Well, these days you almost got to paint like a billionaire, right? But um, it is true because what happens is if you don't mix up enough, your result isn't going to be as good, and then you'll have wasted even more, really. So you got to let yourself have it. You got to let yourself have the paint and be, um, be liberal with it, so, generous. Uh, Marla, really quick, yeah. um, Sarah says that Jed says hi. Oh, oh. Yep. And I, I cool. also have a bead box full of acrylic paint in my um, fridge as well. So it's oh, a great method. cool. Great. Highly recommended. It. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. 
All right, so let's get some paint going. And so there's some purple. This is the dioxazine purple. So we've got nice string, right? I've got a value string and a, a, a hue shift as I go around. So that's a good deal. And give it a little spray, so keep it good. Now this is a, um, I think this is a long flat. It might not be a long flat, it might be just a flat. It's a synthetic brush, I love these. Um, so it's got a kind of soft, they, they're sturdy, they, they hold up to a lot of abuse, <laughs> kind of. And um, you gotta take care of them now. Um, it doesn't look like I've taken taking very good care of it, but I have because I've had it a really long time. So I'm going to start kind of in the middle of this guy. I'm going to put down some paint. So um, do you ever use any slow drying medium? Yeah, you, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, it's fun. Right. Looking good. Are we back? 17. Are we there? Yeah, okay. Sorry, guys. Thanks for hanging in. Little, you never know. Okay, so now I'm adding. I'm adding some of this cr this um, crimson. And I'm I'm not um, I'm letting the colors sort of mix together on the brush and see what's happening. I'm getting this this edge right there of the feathers, which is so cool. What size brush are you using right now? This is a number 10. I'm going to, um, pretty soon, I'm going to switch over to doing some of the background because I want to I wanna get a lot of it happening um, as much as I can. So I'm going to get another brush um, to get over here. And it's a number 10 um, flat? Yeah. And that one's kind of old, right? You've been using that one for a while? Yeah. The, you know, it's funny how artists, I don't think I'm alone in this at all, um, have a ton of brushes. And then <laughs> you always think, it, it's kind of like that thing you think it's going to be the answer, some new brush or whatever. And then you wind up using the same ones over and over.
And um, how did you draw the peacock? Just with acrylic paint? I just paint, drew or? it with acrylic paint. I just, um, I just, I did it this morning because I wanted to get right into painting today instead of taking the time to figure it out. And do you remember offhand what size the canvas was? I, I don't know. I think it's 40. I think this is 40. Well, it might be 36. Um, yeah, it's I, well, I three can, by three. So I, can, I can measure it. It's funny because you did a little peacock, one of those mini paintings that you did. Yeah, I did. So you did it really small and really, really Yeah. Neat. Well, the small one here, I, I've got it here. Where's, where's the little one? Oh, here it is. Here's the little one. I brought it out because I like it too. And I like the colors in it. And um, when I'm painting, I'll, I'll, I do everything I can to help myself out. I don't, you know, hold back on that because I, I feel like, you know, I need the help. <laughs> And so if I've done something already that is, is going to help me or I, or I think could possibly help me, I, I put it right in front of me. Like I've got this guy and it's right in front of me so that I can, you know, why wouldn't I do that? Why, why would I, you know, try to make it good for myself and, and, and fun and e e as easy as possible? Why make it, why make it hard? Okay, now I want to start getting that background in, and that that's going to be a, a shift. So now I have to clean my brush. I usually have a couple buckets, big buckets. When I'm painting large like this, I do have another bucket of water over there because um, you want to keep the water clean, as clean as possible. So you want to have one for cleaning out your brush and one for adding water into the paint. You can add a lot with the spray bottle, but um, it's good to have a lot of water. So I want to mix up, boy, what did I do on that background? It's kind of cool. Um, I love that it's got the kind of grayed look with um, being, I love that. Um, I don't know that I was really looking at this. Let's see what else if I what I want. I'm going to start here. And are you using any medium? I paint? am not using any medium right now. Um, because I, I, you know, I feel like the paint, um, you could, you know, I could be adding something to make it even thicker, for instance. I'm sorry, I'm going to. Yeah, just yeah, feel free to jump in the way if you need to. I'm going to have to. And what color did you tone the canvas? I toned it with um, quinacridone magenta. Now, I'm going to add, I'm going to add something that I don't have in the bead box, which is phthalo green. See how much paint I put out there? Can you talk a little bit, a little bit about how to get more paint on your brush? Like how to load your brush or how you load your brush? Yeah. So. The, the, the thing is to have enough paint and really get in there and, and put it, get, don't be afraid. It's got a lot of paint on it. And so, yes, you are going to waste paint. No two ways about it. Um, but don't think of it as wasting. Okay, you're going to, I should put it another way. You're going to throw away paint. 
You, you're not going to use it all. It's not wasting it. It's part of it. It's, it's hard to get over that, that kind of thought. You know, we're, we're told to be, you know, cons conserve stuff and um, all, all of that. But um, the, the thing is that it, it, it winds up not being conserving it. It winds up being wasteful because you're not going to get the result you want. His, the, the, the contour of this guy is so amazing. They're so amazing. So this is just the first paint layers. I, I would consider this just an initial layer. It's, I'm going to put, I'm going to pile the paint on. That's what I think about when, when I'm painting, not just with acrylic, but, you, you know, I, I want to pile it on. It's got to have, you got to have a lot of paint. Got to have. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get far enough that I can get a sense of the flowers. Let's see. How did I do that the first time? <laughs> what did I do? It was good. I'm also not that worried about like I I put my red into the white. I am not that worried about contaminating my paint. It's okay. I'm going to use it. It's all right. Oh, Kevin, the delivery guy. That guy's here. <laughs> you might hear something out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, I have a delivery coming to, today. And, no, they're gonna. These days, it's all right. This is fun. Okay, I had it kind of more gold up there at the top, and I like that about this. So I'm gonna try to get that. Oh, okay. Garbage. <laughs> it's not garbage day. On the, on the, um, the oh, other road. oh, on the, oh, yeah. <laughs> Funny. I think you be right that's, that, that's what happens when you have a home-based business. All right. Let's get some of this kind of gray gold. This is such a, this is nice. This is a nice color. See, people would say, oh, that's muddy. That's muddy color. I don't think so. I think it's so pretty. It's a muted color. And that muted color is going to go really, really well with the bright blue of that peacock. If I didn't, if, if I made, you know, the background this also a bright, intense color, real saturated, it would not, this guy would not have that same impact. So now I can come around some of this the shapes that I put on here with the pink and sort of start to suggest that I've got flowers back there in the background and that is so fun. Um, why are you not using a larger brush for the background? Oh, oh I could be, but I'm my goal here is not to just cover you know, huge swaths. Um, I I want a painterly. I I want those brush strokes in there. And back to the thing that I said before. There. The, okay, I have all these brushes here. I'll, I have a whole bunch of them. And these two are the two, three. There's maybe there's there's probably 
there's probably four brushes in there that I really use. I just like it. I like the way it, it's in the springiness of it, the way it puts the paint down. So I'm going to gravitate to it all the time. Oh, I might start with something else, but I'm, you know, end up with it because I just like it. A little bit lighter value here coming around this guy. And this paint is still wet because I put it on thick. So I can play with this edge. If I don't put it on thick, it's not going to be, it's not going to be um, wet still. But now it is. Now, switch over to the other brush that had the blue on it. Do you know offhand what brand the brush is? Um, this one is a Utrecht, and this one is a um, Princeton. It's old. I've had this brush 15 years. And so this, this first pass, this is to me, you know, I'm considering this a, the first pass of, of, at this um, is this really uh, energetic, bold um, approach that um, to me that, it, you know, it, that I, I want to get as much of this happening as I can fast. And then um, as I'm working, I'm, I'm going to slow down and make more, more, and it's going to get, it gets more and more nuanced as I'm working, right? Um, so that um, later, you know, I, I, I'm still wanna want it to have this energetic feel, but um, I'm going to be putting less down. So, um, Marla, this canvas was, it's probably a, a Blick canvas, um, just a, it's a prime. Oh, oh yeah, I, it's pr I, didn't, I didn't build it. So you don't build or gesso your own canvases or anything like that? Well, I might put a, more coats of gesso on if I don't, if I want, um, but I don't build them. I, sometimes I, I will, if I need something special or have a special commission, I'll have something built. Um, but I feel like the canvases that are the pre-made ones um, are fine. Um, you know, I, I, I usually spend a little extra for the little bit better ones. Um, but I like them just fine. Uh, so, yeah. It's kind of the same thing people ask me a lot about the pastels. Do, do you um, uh, make your own grounds and do you make your own pastels and uh, things like that? And, um, and, you know, if your style depends on that, I think it's really cool. Mine doesn't happen to, and, and I, so I just prefer to spend my time painting, because that stuff can get kind of time consuming. Um, and that's just a, you know, my, my own kind of personal choice about it. And um, just one last brush question. Do you know sure. the series of those? <laughs> yeah, like I said, I don't even know if they, you know, they probably make it still. It says, 
summit hmm. six d one it, it has the whole the whole thing that I can read on here is Prince um, is number ten flat Princeton art and brush company summit sixty one hundred f that's all I can read on it <laughs> so that's probably that's probably pretty good. I'll just get some of this going in here. And um, what should you be looking for um, when you buy canvas where quality is concerned? Well, that's there's a lot to that. That's a big question. Um, so you want first of all, you want it to be square. You, you know you. <laughs> You or want not it warped, you not mean? yeah well that too not square and not warped you don't want any dimples in it so it's been where it's been sitting something's been leaning on it and because sometimes those dimples can be hard to get out or or you or impossible and they don't look good and then you want to um, you know I'm looking for I want this at least this much depth I don't like the thin ones I think they look a little um, not so great because I like to have my either my my buyer or in the in the, in the gallery or uh, in even in my home if it's for me um, I like to be able to hang it unframed so just paint the edges if you like to paint the edges or tape them off or however you like to finish it. And I think it's a little bit thicker looks better. So um, that's that. Um, in terms of the actual canvas that's um, mounted, um, it kind of depends on what you what you like. Um, but you know, I, I just to me just the regular um, canvas cotton. Canvas is fine, but that that's also you know it kind of depends on your style too. What 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 um because some people like linen and other things. So here's some more of that gray. I think that is kind of cool. Uh, I added some purple to the gray, so I want to kind of grade purple. Ooh, that's pretty. That's such a great color. This is a great color um, in concert with the bright colors that are going to go on the bird. It's it's a muddy color, right? It's muddy looking, but it's going to be great in here. And it's kind of... Um, Really suggesting the underbrush. So in the during the workshop, we cover lots of different techniques. There's 14 different techniques that we um, cover in the workshop, and then um, so there's a video where we cover uh, the the techniques and then there's a blending video there's a mixing video so I give you lots and lots of tools and then in the lesson pieces we go in and we use all that and also I show you exactly you know how to how to do that so I think the the workshop really um, it's not just here um, paint this it's here, here's this. Here's these tools, and um, it's pretty. Um, it's pretty cool. Really proud of it. And you know, I'm. People don't know me as well for. As, as an acrylic painter, but I have been painting in acrylics, you know, since back in the day when I was an illustrator. That's what we used. So, all kinds of acrylic painting. So I want to get some of this in because I'm going to start to get...
Yeah, because acrylics can do so, so much um, that's really fascinating. And unlike oils, you can, you can put down a, a, a impasto layer, and then an hour later, you can put down a glaze layer right over the top of that. And that is so amazing. So I'm just gonna, I'm mixing up some of this like really fabulous color here that um, just to see, not quite ready to like really, really totally do it, but just wanna start getting a sense of what's gonna happen on him. So um, Marla, there's a little um, conversation on the chat about uh, Michelle bought some uh, canvas at Michael's and the she felt like the paint was sliding off. Oh yeah, Michael's. Do not go to Michael's for canvas. You can buy paint there, you could buy brushes there, you could buy paper there. Do not buy Michael's canvas. Good I advice. I hate to say it. I don't like to say that. I don't like to say don't do, you know, I don't like to be a Debbie Downer about anything like, you know, but it does. It's going to slide right off. It's not going to be good. Don't bother. Because I, I, you know, I don't have a, a good art supply store super close to me. So, it, but, but I have a Michaels. It's not too bad. And every now and then I'll go, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to go to Michael's and see if they have what I need. 99% uh, of the time they don't have it. And then if they do have it, then it's usually not something that I'm really happy that I bought. So their craft store, and there's, you know, I love, they, they have great craft stuff, but they are not a fine art supplier. They might play one on TV, but they aren't. Okay. All right, got some fun stuff going here. It's it's getting there. I'm not gonna get anywhere near finishing this guy today, but I think you start to get the sense of him. And um, what I am gonna do is I am definitely gonna finish him, and I'll share that with you guys another time. So make, make sure you head over to the website and check out the, the workshop. It's, it's going to be cool. It is cool. It's already done, but it'll be fun to see what everybody does. People start doing it. I'm going to get some of this so I can play with that edge. So I'm painting him more than he's going to be so that I can come back, cut back into him. So um, can you give a shout out to five-year-old Ilsa? Yeah. Hi, hi, Elsa. hi, hi, Elsa. So she's the only one that gets shout outs. The little, the, the, oh, the little Elsa, kids. are you a painter? I hope you're a painter. You must be an artist. If you're watching, you must be. And that was from? I, I painted when I was five, Elsa. And I painted, and my mom, my, my mom made sure from when I was really little that I had art supplies and that I, um, uh, had art supplies in, in my hands almost every night and when I I never sat in front of the TV without something in my hands. Oh, this is cool. Get that kind of interesting mix of So just to clarify, um, with the new acrylic workshop, most of the pieces that you do are a little smaller than this, right? Yeah, yeah, we're doing small stuff. Oh, I should show you. Yeah, we're, we did 
all, all of it's kind of on the small, small scale. Um, and that was really intentional. But just because something's small doesn't mean it can't be bold. We did a portrait, and so the very bold, expressive style in this one. So we used fairly big brush. I think I I think we used um, wasn't I th it wasn't any any bigger than this. It might have even been one of these. And then let's see what else we did. So so just to give you an idea, then we um, we also did these mushrooms and mushrooms are small, obviously and tiny. So we did everything from the bold, expressive. Uh, approach to really getting in there and rend, rend, what I would consider rendering some fine detail. But what I like about, um, what I like about this piece is that the, there's this detail, Kevin, do, is that, there's, there's this, I, I'm trying to get the best camera shot. <laughs> you don't want to get covered in paint. Yeah. Yeah. What? You don't want to get covered in paint. I know. Like I don't want to put my hand in the paint. Um, <laughs> or put this down on the paint. So the, this kind of fine detail, but then this stuff back here is done with a paint, sort of put, putting a layer down and then painting back into that layer with the neg, you know, getting the kind of negative shapes. So it's not as, as uh, rendered as it might appear. So I'm, I show you how that we can imply detail. Um, so that's, I think that that, uh, it was really, really powerful stuff. Let's see what else. And then we did did this little lands, little landscape again. It's got some it's got some pretty you know fine little detail stuff in it, as well as some bigger uh, kind of more expressive brushwork. So it kind of kind of runs the gamut, and it was really it was really important to me for this workshop to to do that so that you could. Again, just paint anything that you want in any style you want and kind of have at least some kind of pathway into how to do it with acrylics. And, and um, so I think that we really achieved that in the workshop. So you have, you have tons of ways of when you finish, you can really take your own flight Go on, continue your adventure. Okay, so where am I at with this guy? That's oh, pretty fun. And also, just to clarify, um, you painted almost, ex I think, exclu exclusively on small panels for, yeah. that, for that workshop. Yeah, they're on panels. Gessoed um, Masonite yeah. from yeah. Dick Blick. Yes, that's And most of them, I think, are 8x8. Eight eight. Yeah, I think there are a couple 6x6ers six sixers in there that we used. But um, yeah, mostly eight by eight. I want to get. I'm gonna try to get his um, uh, little. I'm gonna switch to this little bit smaller one. But this might not be exact. But I'm gonna try to get it just so we can kind of get a flavor of um, his little. It's so amazing. These. Um, these shapes. And then it kind of shifts a little bit on his beak to something. I want to get some thicker paint on here eventually, but for now, I just want to see, I just want to feel it out a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty fun. How about his? We should put his um, this 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 stuff up here there a little bit. <laughs> that 
just cracks me up, man. And um, you routinely paint over paintings. You, you gesso over paintings and stuff. Yes, I do. I do that routinely. It, uh, uh, you know, it, and there's something like really great and cathartic about it uh, <laughs> to me, painting over stuff. And um, it's like, you know, I, I actually talked about uh, throwing stuff away. Um, uh, was it last week that I did? But I, uh, the good thing about acrylic painting is it's really easy to um, paint over stuff. And um, so you can, you don't have to waste your, your, your canvas. Again, it's not wasting, but um, it it's, makes it nice. Okay, I'm going to get <laughs> I'm going to get up there at the top of this head. I put the photo reference has this little crown going back a little bit more than I've got it, but I I wanted it a little bit more upright. Now, I'm doing this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in into that, those shapes with the background. Yeah, so we just, we just launched the, the new workshop last night. So it's on the website right now. You can check it out. Just I need to get enough paint. Let's see what I want. I want I want to gray it. Well, obviously for a big piece like this, or it's you know fairly sizable thing, you need to you know you need to bust out a little paint. Here's another quick question. Yeah. Are wet on wet and dry brush techniques way, ways to use acrylics? Yes, and we cover. We have, we definitely go into that um, in the workshop. So we go we talk about wet and to wet. We have a, a la prima, so it would be more of an a la prima approach. Dry brushing, um, impasto, glazing. We just we like we just ran the gamut and really go in depth and explain. And how to with with acrylic? What's really amazing about it, and where I think it's real power and creativity comes into play, is that you can use those techniques, and you so you can you can glaze right over the top of impasto in the same painting session. You can you you can um, or do the opposite. You can scumble right over impasto. You can scumble over glazing, and you can do it right away. And that is so fun, and you don't have to wait, and you, you can just really go at it. I think that just makes it, um, you know, oils is just a lot more um, arduous process, and with oils, you know, I love oils too. Don't get me wrong, but with oils, you know, you you there's the smell, there's the the um, you have you know the chemical you know chemicals that you have to um, uh, take care of and um, all, all of that, um, and they take a really long time to dry, and you know, for me, I'm. I have a gallery show later coming up in later in the year, 
And I have a lot going on. I'm doing the lessons and everything, and I'm planning a show, and I'm starting to get the can. My show is not till November. I'm planning on everything, but what's great is I don't have to let those canvases dry for two months before they hang. So I can work. I can work on those paintings right up until the very end if I need to. <laughs> and, and I probably will need to. So um, it's amazing and really, uh, really, really cool. And, and um, I can, and I, and I'm gonna be able to get much of the, you know, look of that I want with the acrylics. It's not. I'm not gonna sacrifice anything by using acrylics. And in fact, you know, I feel like, you know, well, acrylics are more modern um, paint painting medium. All right. So let me get up here, this guy, a little bit, and then. And what do you do with the sides of your paintings when you're finished? So I, um, I prefer to paint them black. We can show. Um, I'll go get one. These, these are, these are, they're kind of dusty, but I paint them black. So I'm gonna. I paint the edges black. Can you? Can you guys? Can you? Can you see it? Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. See, they're painted black with black. It's actually black gesso, which I have a, a little container. I have a container that's about this big, um, that that I've got mixed to the right viscosity for doing just doing. That's all it's meant for is just doing the edges of the canvas. Now some people like to tape them off and have the raw canvas. Um, you know, I just had a couple galleries that weren't fond of that, so they they liked the black edges, and I like them too, so I was fine with that. Um, the other thing that people um, kind of routinely did, they don't, I don't think they do it quite so much anymore, is they paint the painting around the edge. But I got um, a um, comment from a couple of clients that felt like that made them look like a gicle canvas wrap. And they, and it can have that look because that's what a lot a lot, a lot of gicle makers do, print make print print makers do is they do they wrap that image right around the edge. And so um, so I had that comment come. That was years ago, though. Um, so after that, I, I, di I didn't ever um, paint the uh, painting around the, around the edge. But, you know, it's such a, that is such a personal thing. You, oh, yeah, thanks, Kevin. Such a, such a very personal thing. All right, I think we got pretty far on this. Let me just get this filled in a little bit just so we can kind of see, have it have a more completed look a little bit. But I think it sort of starts to imply those flowers up there, which I like. I want, a, I want a little bit more. See how this is getting kind of dry. I could have been better at keeping it all moist. I'll take I'll take this pile and I'll save that. The rest of it's going to have to go when I'm done painting for this session. And um, when you tape when you paint the edges, do you tape off the the paint or do you freehand? I do freehand because I have a steady hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, I still have a steady hand. Maybe someday I'll be taping. I like doing it. It's, you know, it's kind of fun. Mm. 
Yeah. That, <laughs> that's funny. It's good. Yeah, it does. It takes a little practice. You got to get it just like, oh, the other thing. So I have the paint, the, the thing. I, I have to say I have a steady hand, but I also um, have the, the paint at the right viscosity and I have a brush that's perfect for it. Again, that I that's I only use that brush for just that task. It's the right width, and it's just the right brush. And so I I clean, obviously I have to clean it, but um, I don't worry about it, it um, doing other things. So that brush is my edging edging guy. So okay, so in here I feel like I need some more paint layers, some thicker paint, and uh, I, I need to play around with it but I'll do that later. And, you know, I definitely have lots, lots to do on it, but I think it's starting to do some fun things. Um, it would be maybe fun to put the dot in his eye just because it's always fun. Let's see. Not, not white, white, because I don't think it is, but... Yeah, and it kind of brings it to life just a little bit. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I hope you go check out the, the new workshop on the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and um, take a look around. There's other workshops there in, in watercolor, and there's some seasons in acrylic, and, of course, there's pastel workshops and the monthly pastel painting lessons online, which uh, we're just about getting ready to launch year three. So that's coming up too. And but um, in the meantime, check out the, the new the new offering. It's really exciting and it's on sale for about three weeks only, and then we then it goes back to regular price. So um, that's a good time to get it. And um, it's a good time to just go wild and paint all those fun things that we're gonna paint in the workshop. All right. I think that's Questions, or should, should I hang out and wait for some questions? Yeah, hang on for get, a second. Yeah. Uh, let me. I can. There was a question that got lost in the shuffle. Okay. Um, let me see if I can find it. I'll just clean um, my palette while we. I'll show you how I do that. The, see what also good. Okay, so when you're cleaning your palette, um, let's see. Did I bring a scraper? So you need a little scraper like this. This is just a. Oh, this one's really bad, but it's, it still works. Um, uh, if you let the paint just kind of sit there for a minute, it kind of crack, gets crackly, and it, then it's super, super, super easy. See right here, it's getting kind of crackly, so I know that it's really easy now to go ahead. And this scraper's kind of old. Let's see if I can use this, this thing instead. It'll come up better. Yeah. Yeah. So do you right put up. varnish or gloss when you're finished? Yeah, I will put a gloss medium on there at the end. The gloss medium, it's great. It, it really, well, this isn't the right thing either. Um, the gloss medium just brings all the color layers together in such a beautiful way and everything just kind of, it's, it's nice. That, that, that makes a big difference at the end. Because sometimes the, the acrylic paint has that kind of matte feel to it, and that gloss medium just brings brings it all back to life. It's really, really nice. So, yep. All right, guys. I hope you have a really great weekend and get some painting or some drawing time in. And I hope the weather's nice wherever you are in the uh, over the globe. And I really appreciate that people from all over um, tune in and, and check out the live stream. Make sure you check out the website, too. We really appreciate it. Um, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. And uh, we'll see you guys really soon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.